Okay, so um, so the let's start with the five one eight network. Um, let's yes. uh, let's uh, so the five one eight network. Uh, like I had said um before, Christopher Gaunt and Joe Giedel are in it. A lot of people are in it. Um, yes. So so you are also a part of it. Um, can you explain what what uh what it uh what it's all about? Uh, sure. So it's a, a collaborative space that connects uh, film making. Uh, I, I won't say professionals, but not everybody on the network are professionals. Professionals and enthusiasts, and it's anybody from uh, uh, from the crew department. You know, anybody behind the scenes, uh, videographers, uh, directors, editors, sound mixers, actors. And there are multiple groups within the community. There is a event space. There is a space where you can uh, showcase and promote the projects that you're working on. There is a job board where like you're looking for an actor or you're looking for uh, for somebody for crew, you can post it there. Uh, there is a mastermind uh, space that I'm part of and I found it very helpful. And what we do in that space, we uh, meet up, I believe it's once, once a month, and we talk about the things that we're working on, but also the challenges that we're facing with. And if you're a writer, you know, you could be like out of ideas. You don't know where to go next. If you're an actor, like, oh, I received, you know, a million rejections in the last week. I don't have it in me. I think I give up. <laughs> People there uh, would uh, bounce back ideas at you. They would support you. They would hear you out in a safe space. And we all live uh, with actually a homework assignment, like, Okay, so you, yeah, go ahead. I said, wow, that's cool. Yeah, oh, ahead, so you're like, for, ex for example, like, oh, you know, oh, I've been procrastinating, working on my acting website for the past, you know, five months. Like, okay, you have to finish one page, which is a resume page before we meet next time. And once you have that assignment, you're like, okay, this is something very specific with the very specific timeline I have to do. And you go back and do it. And then, you know, you touch best again. So I, I love that master, uh, mastermind space. Uh, they also put together uh, events for the network. And it could be a, like a promotional event for the film that's uh, coming up. Um, you know, Monkey Short just came out recently and they were putting together the promotions. They're, they put up a very sophisticated and fantastic masquerade event last year uh it was a masquerade ball with with some mystery murder mystery included in it where i i had a privilege of actually uh playing their hostess and uh murderer apparently <laughs> nice. well but i was a ghost so it doesn't you know oh. uh, so it, there's there's a lot of things like that and um what's good about this community is that you know you're not alone and if you're trying to put a production together if you want to bounce script ideas of somebody if you're looking for acting training or if you're looking for a reader for your self tape or something like that uh you you can turn to this community and there will be somebody there who will step up and help you out Okay, cool. Uh, for those at home, <laughs> I totally forgot to record everything. And so we had some, she actually gave us a secret to a long and fulfilling life. But since I didn't record it, um, you know, we, we don't have it. So if your life is crappy, blame me. Okay, so I got another question. Okay, so I'm going to kind of thread some of those other questions a little okay. bit by asking okay, maybe okay, okay. alternate questions. Okay, so you have had a lot of uh, like weapons training, martial arts training, physical kind of training. Um, now, and because you play those kind of roles, and, and um, as you had said before, sometimes uh, because your accent or whatever, you get typecast in some of those roles. What, from your experience with um, weapons training, martial arts training, that kind of training, what are some things that you think are if you like, let's say you're just watching a super action movie, what mm -hmm. things are you yelling at the screen about? Like, what are the most common like people screw that up all the time? Okay, we are we are risking right now of uh, a lot of people saying she is wrong. This is but but again, I'm talking about from my experience. So your experience, uh, yeah. For example, for example, in a lot of cases when like their character is entering the building and they have their weapon and they hold their gun like this. It's a cup holder gun. 
So this hand, this is so wrong because if you do the trigger, what does this hand do? Like you, 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 you just fly it up. You hit yourself in the forehead, and here we go, bad guys win because uh, you're <laughs> this is how you're supposed to hold a gun. Uh, there's that. Uh, there's there are very specific ways to actually hold the weapon so that you you are in control of it as opposed to it in control of you. Uh, uh, so I think that's like the the positioner of your hands and take, or when they're like when they're they're talking and they're and they are portraying somebody who's professional. Okay, they're not portraying a criminal or a thug who has no regard to uh, anybody's safety. But if they're police or they're military or they're special agent, they're talking and their finger is on the trigger. Never, never, unless your gun is pointed at something that you are uh, about to destroy. <laughs> your finger is never the trigger and things like that and i you know these things are these are the like the basics that are instilled in your brain before you even ever touch any kind of weapon so but i know there's some uh, actors including like a-list actors in hollywood who are notorious <laughs> for always doing something funky with a gun and no matter how, no matter how many professionals they work with they refuse to do it differently so here we are i, I decided i'm not going to be one of those people so i don't know how to hold it properly so i got training on it okay cool 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 um so um apparently i only have 10 minutes left that's that's see the, all of this is yeah because I, I don't have the professional so okay so i have a couple good questions then I have to make them good I have to make them good because you don't have a lot of time so you had mentioned in the the forgotten tapes and the lost tapes um you had mentioned that it would be really cool to have like an actual studio in the capital region so I want to give you a chance. Like, like, um, let's let's pretend I have a, a billion dollars, and you're just pitching this thing to me, and money is nothing to me. So go ahead, pitch it to me. Tell me, tell me what would make it interesting. What would make it cool? Okay, fantastic. So, uh, studio is the real estate, and you know the three rules of real estate is location, location, location. There is no better location for studio than Capital Region because number one. It's a rather short commute from New York City where you have a lot of maybe actors and maybe you, you have some crew that you love to work with. But the cost of actually setting them up here, putting them in a hotel, park and all that, you're not going to be as congested, right? Second, there is a huge untapped per, uh, potential of local actors that could be used for more than just act, uh, uh, extras, Okay with variety of backgrounds, with a variety of abilities. And there is a, a huge hub upstate. I know a lot of actor friends who are upstate, like towards Utica, et cetera. It would be much easier to bring them here and you know have them uh, here than uh, if you were in the city, for example. Also, there is uh, all kind of variety of sets already built for you from historic buildings in Roy in Albany, in Saratoga, to futuristic Star Wars-like landscapes of Empire State Plaza, to beautiful nature if you want post-zombie apocalypses or somebody lost in the woods hiking. Uh, you have lakes, you have waterfalls, uh, you have abandoned buildings for, again, any kind of zombie or post-apocalyptic movies or any futuristic or sci-fi. Uh, you have untapped potential here. We have a lot of space. There's a lot of space to park. And uh, it would be easier to bring resources here and leverage people who are here as opposed to try to cramp everybody, let's say, in New York City or Boston. That's, that sounds cool. I think I'm going <laughs> to I think I'm going to spend my billion dollars, a uh, billion dollar studio. <laughs> now I got to get I got to get a Where little bar. Yeah, yeah. Write the check. OK, so um. Um, I'm going to ask you one last question, give you a little bit of time to answer it, because I think this is important. Um, writers are on the, the WGA strike. That hasn't been, I'm pretty sure that hasn't been settled yet. No, um, no, it no. hasn't. No, we're close. And I mean, I want people to understand because, you know, it's just writers and this and that, but uh, it affects everybody. If it, it, it goes all the way down the line, even into what I'm going to be watching later on in, on television. So from an act, from an actor's perspective, um, what would you say is is um, the the meat of what me me the viewer should really understand about this? So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as an actor, I have no voice without writers. 
I, there is no story. There is no plot twist. There is no character development. There is nothing. Every story starts with an idea, then the words are put around. And then around the words, you build the visuals and what this world could look like. And writers are in the meat of it. How, I mean, there is, you, how many times, there's no good movie, no matter how fantastic writers are, uh, I'm sorry, how fantastic actors are and how beautiful cinematography is. If writing sucks, if it's not captivating, if it doesn't allow you to uh, connect with a story, you this will be a forgettable movie you'll never watch again, right? Uh, you can uh, make a movie on a shoestring budget with your iPhone, that if the story is brilliantly written and decently acted, you will continue talking uh, about it for years. So the, I can anybody who said, oh, I don't know how acting, you know, how writers affect anything. Well, do you watch Saturday Night Live? Did you notice that they're doing reruns? Why? Because writers write all the jokes. Yes, you can improv, but improv is uh, hard, right? If anybody ever, like there are a lot of actors, professional actors who would say, I'm not good in, at improv, right? I, I wouldn't be able to improv. It, like you can't improv the entire, whatever your favorite movie. You can't, you know, it, you wouldn't know what to do. So actors are their skeleton in the body of a production of a theater, of the film, on top of which everything builds. Without the skeleton, you'll have a mushy jelly uh, and you don't know what is what. So, you know, long story short. But I know it's, you know, the, the, this is such an important uh, period of time right now because it's not only about fairness and compensation, but also about AI, right? A year ago, AI wasn't even in the picture. It was not concerned to anybody. But now, uh, I mean, we all have seen movies where some actors were... Uh, AI reconstructor and he, like I don't know about you I can see it right away and it's in the eyes the eyes there there's no there's no emotion okay so when the script is written by AI how can a machine uh portray intricate uh personal emotion if it doesn't feel it it can replicate the structure of what it analyzed through the large language model but it won't be based in truth right so there is there are a lot of very important crucial questions that i don't have the answers to that are being discussed during these negotiations but um we can't uh question their importance of writers because without them our profession wouldn't exist the way we want it to exist right if you start replacing writers with ai i mean it's not difficult to start replacing actors with AI, right? And we hear about them as well. I've heard, I've read the article the other year that, and it was like, oh, because sometimes actors, let's say, unfortunately pass away in the middle of production. So they're like, we're gonna scan dig digitally every single actor so that, you know, if something happens, we continue the production with their digital copy as opposed to a, a real person. Um, how far are we from, well, I don't really need the perfect actor because I can draw it, right? I, yeah. for me, and it could be generational as well. Like we didn't grow up being surrounded by technology we have on our phones or AI. Uh, the newer generation, it's they're growing up in a different environment. So I'm concerned. I don't want yeah. to be uh... AI in the creative fields. You want real people. You want real stories. You want a, a real why behind everything, not not a code. Okay, I definitely agree. I was thinking of changing my name to John Connor and starting the resistance. Um, okay, so that is, uh, we're getting close to the thing. Um, I want to thank you, Olga Bogdanova. Did I get it right? Yes, yes, perfect. Ah, like you practiced or something. Almost like I practiced, yeah.